Thank you for inviting me. What do you, what do you exactly do for Oracle? I'm a product manager and I work in the database division at Oracle headquarters. And I'm lucky enough to be the um, guy who looks after PL SQL and, though we won't talk about it here, edition-based redefinition. And I'm very lucky because I sit on the floor in the same building as all the people who work for Andy Mendelssohn, all the experts who develop the database. So I'm right there in the heart of it. So what did you do at Doha? I've seen you giving uh, two speeches already. Yes, I had two talks and a session with the PL SQL community. Okay. And um, the main talk was um, one at one part in my life I thought I'd never, never have to do which was why use PL SQL? I had thought it was kind of obvious, but I chose that as the theme because there are certain trends at work in the modern world. Um, so one, one speech then was for developers and the other one for DBAs, is that right? No, 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 no. In fact, that distinction that you implied there, DBA and developer, is a peculiar thing, and we hear it all the time, and it's my feeling that it means nothing at all. The way the terms are used, it's, the, it's implied that developers are a bit chaotic. They certainly don't know anything about SQL, and all they do is cause problems. And on the other hand, DBAs are the people who know a lot and are protective, trying to make sure that things don't get broken, and the net result is that they stop things getting developed. That's the kind of thing we hear, but it's a completely artificial distinction. So DBAs, they have to know about Visual Studio, do they? Well, wait a minute. We can't continue until we get rid of those terms, I would say. And the important distinction, I think, is not between names like that, but between the deployed production system on the one hand and all the activities in all the environments that take place to produce the scripts, build the production system and then later patch it. And I would say that one job role is looking after the daily health of the production system, including patching it, and we could call that administrator. And the other job role is everything to do with developing it, including designing the shape of the tables, including adding columns later on when requirements change, including looking after the PL SQL and the SQL in the database, including all the outside of the database stuff as well. So it's development versus administering the production installed system. Okay, I understand that. So back to the first question, why feel SQL uh, in the age of the modern uh, development languages such as Ruby or JavaScript? Well, that's simple. Um, we are talking about a certain kind of application here. We're not talking about the thing you might have on your smartphone to teach yourself Chinese. We're talking about an application whose whole purpose in life is to persist and retrieve data in an Oracle database. And any such application would be worthless if the data was rubbish. Mm -hmm. The key responsibility of the whole thing is to persist only the correct data and to retrieve it exactly as specified. And in that connection, everything in the database is therefore very important. The tables contain the data, and there's two ways of going about things. One way would be to um, let outside of the database code just have at it, do insert, update, delete on every table whenever they think they need to. Under that model, you could say that the whole blood and guts of the database is just exposed and you have no way, you, the whole application developer community, of knowing that the data in the database is what you want it to be. On the other hand, if you remember a central idea from computer science, as old as the field itself, that insists that properly built large systems rely on a modular description, modular um, decomposition, and where the essence of the notion of module is encapsulation of all the details exposed with a straightforward functionally oriented interface, then we see where PLSQL comes in, because obviously 
the way to expose the database to all these client side um, clients is is <laughs> let me mess up is um, through a API expressed in PL SQL. We could say that we have a hard shell around the database where the individual inserts, updates, deletes, and so on on the table are done only out of PL SQL inside the database, and no one outside of the database needs to know the structures or the details. And that's the whole purpose of PL SQL. It was its purpose when it was invented, and it's its purpose now. And where's Java, where's Python, where's whatever, Ruby on whatever in that picture, they're very excellent ways of building things that produce um, modern user interfaces uh, and they need data to work on. Well, the way they get their data is by calling the PL SQL APIs and then they do whatever they want to do. The things are not mutually exclusive. On the other hand, they work in harmony and as long as the database is encapsulated in the hard shell, mm -hmm. then um, the data which is the most important thing, is correct. Okay. So I see PL SQL is really um, a deep down in the Oracle database. And how does it relate to the relational part of it, like the SQL part? Uh, that's simple. <coughs> um, SQL is the um, basic mechanism for operating on the contents of tables. Of course, yes. And um, SQL, um, Famously, it's a declarative language. It doesn't go beyond the statement. You can't write a program in SQL. All you can do is write one statement. Right. Usually, to get any business function implemented, you need two or several statements. Mm -hmm. How do you get them to go? There's only one way to get them to go. You have to have some if-then-else language yes. to do them out yeah. of. PL SQL is such a language, as C might be as well, but PL SQL has the unique property that it runs inside the database and was written to make the doing of SQL absolutely maximally streamlined, expressive, efficient, and robust. Right. So speaking of like modern uh, application development and also cloud computing, um, PL SQL is part also. You said you weren't going to ask me about the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get you on that one. So uh, schema as a service is referred to like the computing and um, that's why PL SQL is already part of cloud computing forever, right? Well, yes, yes, it's kind of self-evident in a way. Schema as a service is the toe in the water, isn't it? It's the um, minimal, um, minimal exposition of a database, just a single schema, but as long as you work within that schema, then you can create tables, you can create views, you can have synonyms, you can have PL SQL, of course in the ordinary way. And just as it would be in a larger picture, your best um, way to operate there is to expose everything that you put in that schema to do with the data through a PL SQL API. Okay. So, Brent, thanks very much for this conversation. I think um, our people who look at the video will like it very much. Thanks for taking the time to talk to the people and I wish you a nice stay and uh, have a good conference at the door. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for asking me.